Okay, so today I'm delighted to be joined by Ashley Ainsley. Ashley is co-founder of Colouring Tech uh, Not-for-Profit, who work to develop partnerships with the tech community to improve diversity. Partnering with the likes of Google, WPP, Microsoft and Facebook, to name a few, um, Ashley, build, um, Ashley and Colouring Tech build programmes that create access to some of the world's most innovative companies for ethnic minorities. Ashley's also a Forbes 30 under 30, a tech evangelist and a strategic innovation consultant and board advisor. Ashley, welcome. It's great to have you here with us today and thanks for giving us the time. Can we get stuck into it? Brilliant. Well, thanks for having me and, and, and no worries. Let's go. <laughs> Fabulous. So do you want to start with telling us a little bit about yourself? What's your favourite outside of work interest at this time? I saw you on the meta, in the metaverse um, on Twitter earlier this week, but yeah. tell us, <laughs> tell us what, what you, what, what's good for you at the moment. So, I mean, yeah, there's lots of different things going on. So at, at heart, I love technology. Um, it's the reason why I work in the industry. It's, the, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I'm super passionate about. So if there's a new gadget or, or thing that I can kind of, you know, mildly justify um, <laughs> getting that I'll do it. So, yeah, I've got like a, a, a very connected home and all of that kind of stuff. Um, um, outside of that, I love sports. So football as well as a big passion of mine for my sins. I'm an Arsenal fan. So um, I've been through the roller coaster this uh, this season and the ones before that as well. But yeah, that's um, that that and my job keep me very, very busy. <laughs> yeah, you were saying the hours that you work are a bit crazy, aren't they? But thank you. So your elevator pitch, then how would you describe yourself in a sentence or two? Ooh, um, I try not to define myself by my work, if that makes sense. So, you know, I, I just like to say I, I like to be interested and interesting. Um, <laughs> so I'm interested in what people do. And I hope that through my through my work or my outside interests, my passions in technology or culture or society or travel, you know, that we have lots of things to connect people with. Um, and I hope my background in itself is interesting. Um, yeah, I grew up in South London. I went to Oxford. I've worked for companies like Google. I run my own business. I've traveled to 50 plus countries. Hopefully there's something in there which is interesting to people. So yeah, I like to say I'm interested and interested. Fabulous. Thank you. So, um, Ashley, what do you see today as the biggest opportunity for the advancement of inclusion and equality in business? Um, the, the opportunity to keep going is the biggest thing that we've had. So if I look at, especially around, you know, Me Too, um, you know, increasing work around racial justice, over the last kind of five years or so, we've seen a lot of frankly improvement in discourse around what's been going on you know people now have team strategies ideas and budgets and and lots of things to put in place to make things happen and actually i think the biggest opportunity is is harnessing that momentum i think we've started on that and it's continuing that and it's making sure that it doesn't just dissipate it doesn't just become a thing that you know a nice phase to do that like it's it's continuing on the progress that we started to make and you know it will take time and you know i think sometimes people hope that you know there's a silver bullet or there's a flash in the pan but you know I always say to my team sometimes you know nothing worth having isn't without hard work yeah. so you know you've got to you've got to put in that work to make it happen and I think the biggest opportunity is to is to continue on the, the path that we're now moving on yeah fantastic and I said I know that you been um talking a lot or, or posting a lot about the the sort of uh, ethnicity pay data gap and and I, i've i've spoken not too long ago about the gender uh, pay gap issue and, and i think it's just you know as you say building on that momentum and keeping the conversation going isn't it and like any good change it takes it's really hard to make it stick and to see that that change to happen isn't it yeah, and, you know, I think especially with the ethnicity pay gap reporting, it was quite disappointing to see that the government decided that they weren't going to, to, to I suppose, mandate or even strongly encourage organisations to do it. And, and, and that was particularly disappointing. Uh, you know, we've seen some of the world's biggest organisations do it. You know, PwC, BT, Sainsbury's, you know, massive employers in the UK have shown that it's possible to do those sorts of things. So, you know, my call to arms is like, well, actually all organisations should be doing and, and really, why don't they? You know, if it smells fishy, it sounds fishy, it's probably because it is. Like, you know, it's easier not to and, you know, you probably would do it and find out that it wasn't what you wanted it to be. And that's going to require work and energy and therefore people default to not doing anything when, you know, Otherwise, there's a there's an inequity and was in the workplace. And, you know, I'd love for people to tell me wrong. You know, if there isn't an ethnicity pay gap, tell me, let's put it out there. Let's shout about it. Do you know what I mean? If I'm wrong, I'd love to be wrong. Please tell me. Mm -hmm. 
fantastic okay so I mean obviously with the work that you do with um, your business colour in tech you work with some of the biggest names in tech and I've heard you talk previously on other events such as this about your time at Google and one of the reasons that you left and established the business was because the environment there perhaps wasn't as inclusive or diverse as you or indeed they need what needed or wanted it to be I mean what do you see as the primary reason stopping businesses from attracting more or uh, more diverse talent yeah and I think you know I think this is an industry-wide thing I, you know I think historically and just to be honest there just hasn't been enough intention around doing it I think uh, over the last five years we've seen a massive growth in tech roles and non-tech roles but the growth of opportunities in the technology industry and until you know sadly really George Floyd was murdered a lot of organizations didn't really think that they need to do anything about this um, and, and you know that's a sad reality and you know to be fair to, to Google you mentioned and you know some of our other partners actually they were doing it before then i.e they were doing things about this but I think what we've seen is that you know <laughs> it is possible to do more everybody did start doing more so when we were asking to do more like <laughs> it wasn't like it wasn't possible it's that they weren't doing it and you know I still believe that there's more opportunity I think organizations don't necessarily look outside of their own walls I think there has been a, this uh, complacency which is like we're big people know who we are they'll come to us and ah, that's that will do and like you know if they're not getting in that's their problem I call it like pipeline blame when actually you know there's an amazing number of well-qualified highly skilled people who actually are looking at organizations and saying yeah okay you've got a job description there but I'm not going to apply anyway mm -hmm. and it's not because they're not aware it's not because things like LinkedIn or Indeed don't show jobs like those businesses you know have the platforms it's because people look at it and it's like well why do we go to work for lots of reasons and you know we want to go somewhere where we feel like we belong and that we're going to fit in and that you know feels like it's an organic place for us to be and you know that's super important for everybody and whatever they do and you know for for too long organizations have not really um taken into account um how to develop an inclusive culture for everybody ultimately mm. Yeah, because it isn't just the attraction, is it? I mean, it's the retention. And I, I mean, I'm sure you, you're you very well aware of it as well, but there's that McKinsey funnel, isn't there, about, you know, how, how much talent they are able to attract and how much, how often or, or how much talent actually ends up at the C-suite or senior vice president. And it, it's just that retention and how we keep them, how we keep them engaged as well. Uh, and that, yeah. as you say, falls to in, inclusion. And in a modern it? day workplace, you know, gone are the days where someone would go and join an organisation and say, I want to be here for the next 20 years of my career like the the market is more fluid frankly there are cool opportunities high growth businesses and and you know there is what i love about the technology industry is for a long time there's been a race to the top workers conditions have improved actually and and in some lots of industries you see them regressing it's like how how can we get rid of people how do we pay them less how do we give them less effectively for what we get tech's kind of been counter cyclical to that and what that meant is that if your organization isn't at the cutting edge of making sure people feel like this is a place that they want to be someone else will do that mm -hmm. um, and you know and people will go and leave that as a result of that so you know you can't just say oh we're going to be you know more diverse by just attracting people you've also got to think about how you're how you're retaining and nurturing that talent yeah great so what one piece of advice would you give to a business who want to drive inclusion and equality um there's lots of things I could say I think um I've got to kind of cheat on this answer and probably say a few so forgive me I no, think that's... the first is that um that don't do things sequentially a lot of organizations took years to kind of say what everybody knew which is like they weren't diverse it's like right we're going to spend the next year kind of doing this report and finding out all of our data and kind of seeing where we are and all just know what would happen where to be honest you could have talked to your employees you could have just looked around the room <laughs> but yeah that took a while do you know what I mean and I get people data driven but what progress was made as a result of doing that so that's not to say that it wasn't a good thing to do of course you need data of course you need to measure things of course you need to understand the improvements that you're making but you need to do things together you can't just do things sequentially this did it work no 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 we might not do that you have to have a multifaceted multi-pronged you know dual try approach to make things happen together and you have to get into that thing of experimenting and not everything will, 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 will work but actually um by doing more you're gonna probably hit on more things that do work <laughs> um so you know i think that's that's probably the the main thing that i would say for any organization that's really thinking about you know what they should do and i think 
think the second is to 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 really look outside of the the walls. Um, again, I think a lot of organisations have spent a lot of time looking, you know, internally and doing things on that. And I think that's super important to that belonging and retention piece. So again, I'm not saying don't do that, um, but what I'm saying is you can't just do that because if you just do that are you any more diverse than when you know you started your retention numbers might actually improve a bit but you've got to also bring new people into your environment you've got to not just look for culture fit I call culture add value add what are people adding to your understanding not just do they fit like are they challenging what fit looks like in order to really make sure that you are developing a more holistic approach to understanding your customers your clients your your workplace and again so don't just look internally of course do that but also look externally and think about how you engage with new people that you don't otherwise usually do so great excellent thank you and looking back at your your career then I mean what what was your biggest break and and who do you have to thank for that yeah I mean my my life certainly changed when I got my um my my opportunity to work at Google um you know I was really fortunate that I kind of fell across it I I got told um you know thanks to a, a few friends that I knew um, and a great organisation that I, I know dearly called Rare that, that 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 Google were looking for opportunities and had that. I got introduced to a mentor, a guy called Oliver Boone, who, who still is actually at Google today. And um, yeah, he he really helped me understand what it was uh, like to put in a competitive application. And ultimately, I was super successful at that. You know, I can thank my my manager Emma and Mark, who I, you know who 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 were amazing at my time there and gave me some really strong advice. And you know, after that, I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about what it was like to work an amazingly successful business what working internationally was like um and also what could be better and you know using that inspiration for the next 10 plus years of my career has been super helpful and you know I look back on it from memories I love Google but I still do you know I, I I recommend people to work there you know I work with them strongly and they're amazing organization um and that's you know then no one's perfect and they're not even you know but 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 you know they're doing good things and and you know I've got a lot to thank them for great and I mean for, for underrepresented you know aspirational talent do you have a piece of advice for, for them and as to how you know if they're thinking about their career and maybe not sure of opportunities mm. available to them what 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 would you sort of suggest this is a simple one for me network um it's all still whether that's right or wrong I think we're all human so I don't know if it's wrong but building your network is a great thing to do the ability to to know people who are doing interesting things five years ten down years down the line to be able to call up somebody to ask someone a favor to get an introduction to someone to to have someone look over something that you're submitting or putting something in having the ability to to broaden your your network is so important and and a lot of you know minorities whether that be females in the workplace you know those disabled lgbt uh, ethnic minorities we often networked impoverished we don't have the same strength of those professional networks as other people in the workplace and i think what i would really say is is, is start building that early start building that strongly and 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 the benefits might not necessarily occur straight away but are intangible in some instances, very tangible in others, but will will occur. Great. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we tell people the same, you know, your network and the value of it, you know, just as you say, those connections with other people, you know, it, they grow and it becomes exponential, doesn't it? So it's a great, great advice. Thank you. And, uh, and lastly, then, I mean, what you've done so much, um, uh, you know, already and, you know, you've got so much energy and passion. What, what inspires you and, and, and why? Uh, thank you for asking and, and I appreciate that. I think, um, you know, there are a couple of things that inspire me. I, I, I feel that there is a way that we can make change. And I think, you know, lots of entrepreneurs kind of, you know, especially when you're mission driven, kind of sense, you know, you could be setting up a business like, you know, transfer wise or wise now or whatever it be. But, you know, you see an opportunity to do something and, and, and that is, is, is bigger than kind of just purely, you know, a salary or commercial gain so to speak you want to change the way things are done and and for me you know I look at this and it's like I get massive fulfillment by 
by knowing that, you know, the work that we've been doing helps someone get a job or like, you know, changes their life, gives them an opportunity that they didn't have before. And, you know, I've worked in lots of different things. I've won successful projects, but the thing that, you know, has the thought of me most is knowing that other people have now maximized on their potential to do new things. And that's, you know, that's what motivates me, you know, strongly. And, I, you know, I feel that we can get this right. And I feel like by getting this right, we will do exponential benefit to society as well which which is um you know a nice thing to say which you know I can't say for all of the jobs that I've done um so so yeah the, the ability to make a difference I think is the thing that really really motivates me yeah that's fantastic and a lot of those sort of drivers you know very similar to what we do in our in our space you know and it's you're right you get so much from other people and seeing people succeed and you know that sense of being able to give stuff back you don't always get in every role and um, but obviously you, you you've had the opportunity and or have created opportunity to do just that for yourself which is fantastic all right well that's that's my questions for today Ashley so I really really appreciate your time once again um, and thank you thank you very much brilliant and if anyone wants to find out about my work or anything that we do please please go to colorintech.org um if you type in color and tech into whatever search engine you like um you will find us as well so yeah please do check out us and our work thank you i will and i'll pop all the details on the screen as well for you amazing brilliant Cheers. Fabulous.